Hey guys, my name is Bobby and welcome to the first of many videos in a series all about editing your wedding films. In this series, I want to tackle the entire process from offloading your footage onto your drives all the way to delivering your films to your client and maximizing your views of your finished product. I'm going to show you behind the scenes of an actual edit of mine, taking you step by step with me and showing you how to not only create an awesome film, but also how to maximize your efficiency and ultimately save yourself time and money. In this first video, I'm going to share how I properly import and organize my footage, a crucial step that has shaped hours off of my editing time. And of course, anything I share in this series isn't the only way that things can be done, but with over 12 years in the industry, it's what I've found to let me efficiently and consistently create the best films for my clients. So whether you watch this from start to finish or leave it up in a browser while you're editing away, I'm excited to share what has worked for us for so many years. And I hope that these videos help you be more efficient and intentional with your post-production process. All right, guys, so here we are uh, in my computer. And just a heads up, we've got construction going on outside of our house right now. Um, so you're gonna hear some noise there, just a little bit of background noise uh, on and off. I've also got some drives offloading stuff and they're a little bit close to the microphone. so might hear some noise there. Um, but of course, going over how to organize um, for your wedding films, and that starts actually before you even get into your editor. Now I'm gonna be in Final Cut Pro 10, um, but a lot of what I'm doing is kind of more in theory, and yes, I'll be using tools that Final Cut um, you know, gives me, uh, but if you're in Premiere or something else, you can probably emulate something similar as well. But like I said, it all starts actually here um, on your hard drive, in your finder, or, you know, whatever, before you get in. Uh, I think it's incredibly important to organize well um, in this phase, and it just kind of makes things easier for you, uh, especially the way that I choose to organize in my editor. It makes it easier. Um, but, you know, I've, I've looked at hard drives of other wedding filmmakers, and some do a great job of this, and some dump every clip in just one giant folder and it's such a disaster and such a mess to deal with and honestly guys you are costing yourself a ton of time if that's how you do it so to try and keep this more quick and to the point i'll just show you how i divide things up at this stage you can see this is my folder for a wedding um, and then i have these labeled by camera so we use three sony's this is our third camera so they're not really in order in fact they're actually in reverse order probably of importance for us um, but you can see i just have all the clips taken um, in there. My audio, I divide this out when I offload it. When you offload it, you know exactly what it is. You know you know, if it's a lab or your DR40 or your main feed or your backup feed or anything like that. So organize it now. If you get into your editor and you have a bunch of files named, you know, Tascam 017 blah, 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 and you've got, you know, 20 of those files, you don't know what they are and you have to listen to them and you're costing yourself time. Um, so uh, in this, you know, I can, I, we actually mic'd up the bride here, um, but the bride ceremony lab, um, the bride, we actually, this was like letter reading the vows here. Uh, we did that before. Um, the first look, so that's a groom lab. You have the groom vows right here. You have the pastor lab, um, father of the bride first look. So I know what all those labs are. This was actually a unique wedding. Now that I mention it, we didn't have a DR40. This was an elopement, as you'll see in Glacier National Park. Um, so we did not have uh, an, any amplified sound. So usually we would have a folder that said uh, DR40, and we'd also have a backup, which are which uh, we use our DR10X. But you know, there you go. Drone again, basically essentially just like a camera. Uh, this phone stuff is kind of this thing we're doing for this weekend, so don't really worry about that because um, it was kind of a, a weekend thing. We shot a little bit with our phones and just going to mess around with the cool intro with that. And then uh, the time-lapse TL here, time-lapse. So that's my Lightroom folder. Um, so that's kind of how I organize here. And like I said, that's really important when I go into my editor. So I'm going to bring up Final Cut here. I'm going to show you exactly how I do this step-by-step. -step. Um, this is going to be loosely based off of what I learned from Ron Priest. Um, you'll see a template that I've made um, that I, I, I kind of spurred from learning from him. Uh, when I transferred from Final Cut 7 to Final Cut X, uh, so this is actually what I was using to make that time lapse. So I'm gonna go ahead, first things first, I'm gonna make a new library. I like to name it my couple's names. 
I'm just going to put it here for now. And then I'm going to delete this time lapse one just so you guys don't have to look at that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my other drive, which I need to plug in real quick. And like I said, I have that, uh, I have that template all set up. So I'm going to open that. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this template over here. Now you don't need this template. Um, it doesn't make, uh, you know, it makes it easier for sure, but you can make this template. All it is is a bunch of smart folders or keyword folders or whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that or close it out. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to close this drive out so I can plug my computer back in. All right, so we have that uh, template open now and it's in my Emily and Chris library. And if you don't have this template, but you want to make something like it, all it is is divided into scenes with, uh, these folders right here, smart collections. So all you do is you make a smart collection. I'm gonna delete that one. I'll jump into one that I actually already have made. And so for bridal details, for example, I'll double click. And I just have these rules essentially. So the media is video with audio. Uh, on my aerial ones, it is just video because there's no audio. And then the next rule is that the format, the scene is bridal detail. So. We're gonna jump into that in a second, but let me import my footage and I'll show you how I divide all this up. So we are in the wedding folder here and I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna grab all of my footage, the folders, let's see, I'll do it all right now, including the audio and that one time-lapse. And the phone stuff I'm gonna leave out again, it's just part of an intro and uh, it's not gonna play a huge role. So again, I mentioned how it's incredibly important to have your, uh, your organization start early on your hard drive. And the main reason for that is that if I go into uh, my folder here, you'll see that it creates a keyword folder for each folder that I imported. That's why I drag those folders in. And what this allows me to do is if I know there's a shot that I love and I really want to use and I'm not seeing it when I get into my scenes after we do that, um, because occasionally I'll make a mistake and I'll just misspell something when I'm typing in the scene or, you know, something like that, or I'll, you know, grab a clip and put it in one scene that was supposed to be in a different scene. Uh, and I don't know where to find it. I can always go back to these folders. This is all of the footage on the a6500, all of the footage from the a7s2, etc., etc. et cetera. All right. So, uh, then the next step to get this as fluid as possible is to go into these folders and you're gonna click on a clip here and you're gonna to go to your inspector into the info and you wanna make sure this is set to extended. If it is just basic, you're not gonna see the stuff that you need to see here. You're gonna to go to extended because you need to be able to see the reel, the scene, the take, camera angle, stuff like that, all right? So for this, the quickest way to do it, if you don't care about like eliminating keywords, certain areas and stuff like that, is to just do the scenes. Again, that is what my uh, folders are set up for here. Um, these ones like here, it's saying that the format is the scene is bridal details, all right? So we're gonna go into the, we'll go to the A7S2 because that is uh, a little more complete. And this day started off with morning yoga. So you'll see things like, you know, if, if there's something like that that you want a separate folder for, you can just create a new folder by going file, new, smart collection, and then you're just gonna set up those parameters that look like this, but you know, make it yoga or whatever you want it to be. For me, I'm just gonna put this in bridal prep. Um, I don't have an issue doing that. We shoot pretty minimally, so it's not like I'm overloaded with footage. Um, but you'll see some of my categories here, aerial, bridal details, bridal prep, ceremony, cocktails, the dress, I like to do, I do like to have that separate. Um, this is establishing shots, ceremony, establishing shots, reception, uh, family, first look, groom prep, reception, romantics, slow-mo, this one's actually interesting. We don't shoot uh, very much slow motion. You can see it's pretty much only the dress. We only shoot slow motion uh, stuff that you can't really tell that it was slowed down. I don't like slow motion with people. Um, but the the only rule for this one is that basically it's a video that I imported and it's 59.94 or 60 frames per second basically. 
Um, so it's just an automatic rule like that. Venue, wedding party, and I often find myself uh, adding more things to this. But again, all we're gonna do here, go to the top. So this stuff is, you know, this is part of, I could do this in venue or uh, bridal prep, but this is kind of part of that whole yoga experience. So I'm gonna click on the first one, then I'm gonna work my way down to the last yoga one, which is right here. And in the scene, I'm just gonna write bridal prep, hit enter. And you'll see it made it in its own new category here. And we'll work through a couple more just so you see some examples. This is the groom and they were kind of setting up the reception. So again, this is kind of an odd one. It could be um, establishing shots of the reception or it could be groom prep. I'm gonna do a little bit of both here. So I'm gonna put this, these two as groom prep. And I'm gonna do this stuff, setting up the reception area as est shots dash reception. And then like a few of these, we're looking at the venue. So through to there, we'll put that in as venue. All right, so you can see here we have bridal prep, we have S shots reception, establishing shots, groom prep, and then down at the bottom, just because it's alphabetical, uh, is the venue. Uh, and then also, of course, importantly, if you go in here, bridal prep, in this folder, it has everything you put in bridal prep. So if I put shots from the A7S II, the A7 III, and the A6500, they'll all be in this folder. Similarly, if I go back to the top of kind of just the main library, it uh, also lists them out by category here, and that will contain all of the shots no matter which camera they are from. All right, guys, so now you can see that I have everything labeled. I went through and did that, and you can see it in categories here, starting with Arial. I have it set to go alphabetical, so bridal details, bridal prep, uh, and all the way down. And then I can also go into the scenes down here, and I can see just those scenes if I want to. Aerial, bridal details, stuff like that, romantics, etc. And if I want to, uh, again, go back, if I can't find something, maybe I put it in the wrong folder because I you know, misspelled it or something like that, added a capital letter when there wasn't one, uh, then I can always go back into these folders here, these keyword folders that were made from the folders that I had on my hard drive. Um, going through them like that. Now, uh, one other way that you can do this, I prefer doing it this way, it's just kind of how I learn and I feel like I'm quicker at it, but you can also use this, this is the keyword editor, and you can create these shortcuts, so you're gonna hit uh, control, you know, one, two, three, four, whatever, and you can assign these as your labels, basically. So, kind of works like these, I have it by scene, but you can do keyword labels instead if you'd prefer, and you can just delete one of these, and you can make this venue, or you know, whatever you want it to be, and then you're just gonna click on a clip, and if you hit command two, I mean, that's the wrong one, but let's see what would this. So let's say we wanted this to be bride. We'd hit command one, and it would have the keyword bride attached to it. And then you could search for it that way. But again, I choose not to do it that way. I think this is easier because I can just grab a bunch of clips and put them in the folders, and it's not that big of a deal. Keyword, I think, can actually be a little bit faster if you're more used to it, though, just because you aren't having to type anything out. You can just hit control and the number. But since I have more than nine um, folders, I prefer it this way because uh, the keyword I have to change them around and then I get a little bit confused about which one is which. Now one other important thing before we actually get to the edit is to set where our uh, cache and our media and stuff like that, I don't like having it in my project file. I don't like when my project files you know, optimize stuff and all this stuff and it like balloons up to 500 gigs or something insane like that. Um, I like to know exactly where it is and that way I can delete it when I know I'm not using it. So you're gonna go up to your library here. You should do this in the very beginning. I think I already probably did it with this one, um, which is why I didn't do it on screen here. But you're gonna go to uh, modify settings here in storage locations. And oh, it looks like I didn't. All right, so perfect. So I like to have my media in a folder called new media. Um, so I'll do it here. I'm just gonna hit new folder, new media, create. 
Um, I usually have it on a different drive. That's why it didn't show up, actually. So I'm going to choose that. And then all the generated media that it makes or if it optimizes something, it's all going to go into that folder so I know where it is. And then the cache or cache, not sure. That's going to go in a folder called cache in the same drive. Hit choose. Those are the only two that I change. I'm not doing a whole lot of motion content, and I like having my backups sitting on my computer so I know I have it somewhere else. Um, so that's all you're going to do as far as settings there. going to hit OK. Uh, this is because I've already done stuff, so I'm going to hit include. But if you just opened up the, uh, the editor and then we're doing that, then you shouldn't get that message. And then we're pretty much all good to go. That is organization. Again, this is going to speed me up uh, to get this edit done as quickly as possible, know exactly where clips are. And so to lead you into the next one, next video, we're just going to go to new project. We'll call this Emily Chris Highlight Film. I'm going to use custom settings. We like to edit in a more wide uh, aspect ratio, the 235 1. So I'm going to go to custom 1920 by 816 are my settings, everything else remains the same. Hit OK, and we've now got our timeline ready to go.